Greetings, I am Herbert Erbaderp, and today I'm going to build this SDKFZ222, or Nymechi Lecky Samochod Pansoni. Oh, great pronunciation, Herbert, well done! Please don't kill me, Polish friends. This is a 70 second scale plastic model kit from First Fight, intended for their war game Vrzhizh in 1939. I haven't got an image of the rear of the box, but rest assured, it is quite back of box like, very consistent with other First to Fight kits. You'll find the instructions there, and a basic painting guide. There are no instructions inside the box, but they can be found on First to Fight's website, which is convenient. I've put the link in the description below, which is also convenient. Inside the box, we find a few sprues moulded in a dark grey plastic. The first thing I noticed is that the lower half of the hull is really well detailed. In fact, when I did the rough edit of the building part of this video, I had a moment of panic thinking I'd lost the first half that showed how all that detail got there. Fortunately, the part just comes that way. Looks pretty good if you ask me. The other parts on the sprue are also pretty good. Things are moulded nice and neatly, and you shouldn't need to do much cleanup. This is a fairly simple kit, even in comparison to some of the other First to Fight kits I've built. That's not a bad thing of course, and the simplicity doesn't really impact the level of detail, though it does make it a bit easier to put together, obviously. Sometimes, thin, easily broken parts are an issue in First to Fight kits. Not all of them though, and this is one that doesn't really have any excessively thin bits. I'm sure some things, like the gun could still be broken if you're not careful, but there isn't anything you'll need to be extra careful with. There is also a crew figure, though he does kind of look like he should be standing in front of the vehicle, posing for a picture rather than actually being inside of it. You won't be using him anyway, Herbert! That is true. He still looks pretty decent though, in my opinion. Decals are also included. These are simple, as they often are with first to fight kits. You don't really need much more than this, and I'm sure if you do want more, aftermarket decals or maybe something suitable from your stash could be found fairly easily. As with all the first to fight kits, a magazine is included, or rather, I think they technically include a model with the magazine. It is of course in Polish, so monolingual Herbert can't read it, as demonstrated at the beginning of the video. But still, there's pictures and a basic painting guide inside, so non-Polish readers can still get something out of this. Very good, let's glue some bits of plastic together. I start with the hull, and you can see why when I put these clips into Premiere, I thought maybe there were some previous steps that I'd lost. Again though, this is just how the part comes. I glue this bumper thingamajig onto the front of the hull, and it goes into place nice and easy. And then it seems like a really good time for wheels. Oh it's that original joke again! Ha ha ha! These go onto the axle parts as you'd expect, but there is a little bit of play in them, so you might have to do a bit of nudging to make sure things are all lined up neatly. I then install the driver's seat, which I'm pretty sure won't be visible. I mean, the turret is open topped, so you might be able to see down into the chair, but I don't think so. If you did want things to be a bit more visible, you could paint the interior, and now would be a good time to do that. Are you doing that, Herbert? No, I'm not. So, I glue the upper half of the hull on. This is pretty easy. There's a couple of guide pins on the inside of the hull, and everything goes together nice and neatly with little effort. I did apply a bit of pressure to minimise gaps, though gaps weren't really a big problem here to begin with. There's a few more bits of detail to add, like this little box thing on top of the engine deck. This is obviously a place to store sauerkraut. The heat from the engine will keep it nice and warm. This bigger box, also for sauerkraut, goes on the hull left, and it pretty much just plops right into place. I put a bit of extra glue around it to let it know that I'm serious about it staying there. On the opposite side I attach a spare wheel. I did have a little bit of difficulty getting the keying to work properly here. It did go into place eventually though. Front mudguards come next. These don't actually have any keying, but the parts are shaped such that they should just kind of sit together properly. That said, it is possible to have them a bit misaligned, which is what I did at first. With a bit of kajiggering, I've got them on reasonably neatly, probably pretty close to the right place. It's not the hardest thing to do, it's just a little fiddly. Next, I glue the lower portion of the turret into place. You don't have to do this, but I feel like with the way the gun mounts, it would just make things tricky and annoying if the turret wasn't glued into place. You can probably see what I mean. 
There's a round thing in the bottom of the hole for the base of the gun to sit in, and then the upper part, the shooty bit, just sits in the appropriate opening in the front of the turret. So if you didn't glue that in, it would just fall out of position with even the most gentle movement, and that would make it a pain in the ass to try and make this turret removable. If you want to do that yourself, be my guest. I'm not going to though, plus it would just disappoint the glue god. There is a second gun that mounts to the left of the main gun, and that's easy enough to glue into place. On top of that, I attach the turret roof cage thing. Obviously on the real thing this is a kind of mesh, but it's a solid part here because obviously it's so tiny and replicating mesh here would be difficult or require photo etch. Ugh. In case the driver of this vehicle needs light to see, I attach some headlamps. These are a little bit fiddly to get into place, but not the most difficult thing. The trick is to not immediately drop the model and knock the lamps out of place, but I don't know who would do that. The final touch is the ball on stick vehicle with indication system. These are also slightly fiddly to get into place and you'll probably need to do some eyeballing and nudging. The left one has what seems to be a mirror mounted on it, so it's probably not a bad idea to make sure that's around the right way. And that's it. The SDKFZ222 in 70 second scale from first to fight is completed. This was a fun little kit to put together and I think the result is rather good. The detail is quite nice, especially when you consider that this is intended for gaming use. I'm reasonably confident that this model would have a good chance of surviving the rigours of tabletop gaming too, and that's not always the case with first to fight kits. Some of them are just downright delicate. I guess how much that really matters depends on how gentle you and your opponents are. Either way, this is a nice model with good detail and I think it'll look great once it's painted up. Clearly though, that's a matter for another day. The kit was nice, quick and easy to put together, and that is probably kind of obvious if you've watched the video. In fairness, most first to fight kits are pretty easy, and that's one of the things I enjoy about them. You get a good result with minimal cleanup and well fitting parts without spending too much time or money, and I'm sure you can see why that's appealing. There will of course be more first to fight kits on my channel in the future, though this was the last one I had in my stash, so I guess that's a good excuse to do some hobby shopping. Anyway, I might be waffling now. If you've got any questions or comments, feel free to put them in the comment section below. It's pretty good for that. If you want to watch me build kits like this one live, come check out my Twitch channel, which is where I live stream these builds. The link is in the description below. Be sure to subscribe and ring the bell here on YouTube to see more of my modelling shenanigans. And if you would like to see my videos a bit early, before there's any ads, consider becoming a patron. You could do worse. You can find links to Patreon and all of my other things like Discord and social media in the description below. Take care of yourselves, be excellent to each other, and thanks for watching. Farewell.